God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? It's a Tuesday afternoon, 5.30 on time. This is Robert Jenkins. We're out of New Orleans. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. God bless everybody. And then always, me and my wife like to take out the time first to say thank you for your support, all those that support us. And we appreciate all that you do. And taking out the time of your day to be able to listen uh, to this teaching. So good bless everybody you do. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for your support. You come on almost first every time. Felicia, we got to give you and your husband a call. Check and see how y'all doing. God bless you. Tasha, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Nisi, God bless you. So as always, we ask you to hit that share button and please share this on your page. Good to see you, Leonard. And also tell people that there's a word out uh, from the Lord every day, 530 uh, Central Standard Time and, and 630 Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So God bless you. We're going to do a part two today on the ministry of faith and love. Good to see you, Prophet Brian. God bless you. So we're going to do a ministry, talking about the ministry of faith and love. It's a evangelistic ministry. It's a ministry of reconciliation. It's a uh, ministry of recovery. So we're just going to talk about that. And I, I said probably today or tomorrow, we're going to do some rededication. Uh, and probably make, maybe both days, uh, re returning back to our passion and purpose for God. So God bless you. As always, we love you. And please hit that share button. Okay, Father, we bless you. For what you're doing in our lives thank you lord for the advancement we thank you lord for increase we thank you lord for financial increase we thank you lord for spiritual increase god we thank you lord that you have never left us nor forsake us and we thank you for your grace and your mercy god we ask you to bring to us a clarity a revelational word concerning you so we can be more like you and god give us practical information that will change our lives that will be acceptable in your sight. And God, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm hearing increase. I'm hearing increase. Um, you, you notice that I said that in my prayer. So be prepared for increase. God grows us up to increase in our life. You should be increasing in knowledge. You should be increasing in wisdom. And there is, it should be an increase in finances. And I say that because we have to be a blessing to the kingdom. The world is about to fall. Matter of fact, it's falling now as we speak. It's falling. And they're going to run to the church. And it's going to be those people who have positioned themselves for this transition, who have positioned themselves for this transition, that you are going to be overly blessed so that you can bless others. There are going to be family members that have never embraced you. But when this time comes, they're going to know that your light is for real. You have, you have not forsaken them. You have not mistreated them. And they're going to know that when hard times come, they're going to turn to people that they know has power in their prayer. And that people that will still love them in spite of. And you are being blessed. There's an increase in your life. You're like Joseph. God allowed Joseph to have an increase in his life. So that when the famine came and the same brothers that put him in the pit was the same brothers that he was able to be a blessing and cause them not to receive the famine because they was connected to Joseph. There's a reason why you're in your family. There's a reason why you're in a certain city. There's a reason why you had a certain job. OK, and there's a reason why. So expect that increase. Expect things to happen. You know, we never know how God works. Sometimes a check come in the mail. I'm not trying to, you know, pinpoint it down, but I do hear the word increase. But anytime there's an increase in our lives, we have to prepare ourselves. Remember this, prepare ourselves, position ourselves to have the mindset to know what to do with the increase, okay? Because what, what comes along with increase is pain, okay? What comes along with blessings is pain. And the reason why, if you could be blessed without pain, the blessing would cause you to be arrogant. The blessing itself. OK, this is why God allows us to go through some things once he blessed us, because it keeps us humble. It keeps us humble. And if God did not allow you to go through certain things in your life, you will not you, you will not be humble. You will be arrogant. You will be self-centered. You wouldn't think about nobody. You will be self-righteous. You'll be all these things. So sometimes even in the increase, there is pain. Don't think because you heard the word increase or you heard the word uh, elevation or you heard the word higher that pain don't come along with that. If God answered every one of your prayers, if he did everything that you intended for him to do without any suffering, it would it would eventually destroy you. OK, so God is preserving us. So that's very key. All right. 
So I want to talk about the ministry of faith and love, and I want to talk about uh, a lot of things today that I think will be a blessing to us, okay? The first thing I want to talk about, in this restoration, God is calling us and have raised us to help people uh, be restored, okay? Be restored. God bless everybody. If you're just coming on, see Prophet Charmaine coming on, Angela Yancey, God bless you. Uh, God is blessing us to help people restore, okay? This is a time of restoration. This is a time of recovery, okay? So in this, there must be the mentality to be able to help those people. And I talked about it yesterday. There are a set of people that God want you, and he has given you the measure of faith. He has given you the grace to handle the people that everybody else will not touch. Matter of fact, let me tell you this. If how can I put it? Um, the people that are called to help the uncommon folks, to help uh, the, the, the leprosy, the reason why you can help them, because you had leprosy. People did not want to deal with you. You were strange. I'm strange. It takes a special anointing to know me. Hear that. It takes a, and see, a lot of people can hear you but not know you. And people can get confused because they hear you, they think they know you. But it takes special people to be with special people. People who have a special calling on their life, they think different, like musicians think different, okay? No question about it. Worshippers, if you've been around a true worshiper, they think different. Their personality is different. If you've been around a real prophet, they think different, or real prophetess, they think different. And this is why sometimes when we have those kind of callings, it's lonely because very few people can really come to know us and then love us. But God raised us up so that we can identify um, ourselves in others. Woo! God, I feel the anointing. You got to be able to see you in somebody else and say, I understand you because that, that's something I would do. That's something I would think. That's how I would feel, okay? So God is raising us up to bring restoration back in the body of Christ. In order for us to do that, in order for us to operate in this ministry of, of faith and love, and I'm talking about the ministry of faith and love, I'm talking about out of Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. It says, so faith works by love. There are some things that you will never do that you've been designed to do. There are some challenges that you will never face if you don't understand that you have to have love and you have to have faith. It's based upon what God has told you concerning these people. Okay, they're going to be people that God wants to use, but you got to have real love for them. People who have real struggles, people usually don't love. This is why a lot of times people who have real struggles, they don't tell people they have struggles. Because the minute you know what my struggles are, you usually don't have enough love to love me. See, and this is a bad thing, even in, when it comes to church people or uh, in the Christian um, uh, people got $3 love, 75 cent love, uh, $2 and 55 cent love. So if you mess up too many times, they run out of change. They don't have enough to love you consistently. God is rich in mercy, but God is raising up people who are rich enough to love you for 18 years, to walk with you through your ups and downs, your wrongs, your rights, all these things to, to be able to bring you back into redemption or to bring you back into salvage, or to bring you back into reconciliation, okay? Real talk, okay? And most of the people that are called to do this, we have a mark in our own uh, in our own character. We have a mark in our own past. You can look at Moses, and even though he was called to be a leader, to go back to, uh, to, to set God's people free from Pharaoh, Moses had killed the man. This was on his life. Okay, you look at Saul who was turned to Paul, even though he preaches a powerful message and he writes more books in the New Testament than anybody ever. But still, this guy was assassin killer. He, he has he has a past that has to be reckoned with. And everybody do not want to look past your past to see your future. But the reason why you have it is because God's going to use everything you've been through to reach people like you. Okay. To be able to help people get themselves together like you. To be able to brush off the dirt off of people and see the diamond in the mud. Okay? 
Very key, okay? So I'm talking to you right now. But in order to do this, point number one today, in order to have a real ministry of faith and love, you must be able to exercise forgiveness. Forgiveness. Whenever we don't forgive people, it blinds us to where they're going. It blinds us to where they're going in our lives. Okay? You must be able to exercise forgiveness. This is very key. A lot of times people end up in divorce because they can't practice forgiveness. I, I, one of the number one traps that the devil tries to do to covenant relationships is to have you believe the behavior of the person in the journey, but forget about what God said at the beginning of the journey. You married him for a reason. You married her for a reason. Come on, y'all was best friends for a reason. He had a powerful ministry at one time for a reason. What came in between sowing and reaping that made the flower die? What killed it in the process? What made it back up? And you must have the spirit. I'm going to put the word spirit on today. You must have forgiveness, okay? Now, I want to talk to you because I'm telling you that there's some sons and daughters that God wants you to go back and get. There's some sheep that God wants you to leave the 99 for. There's a coin that God wants you to look for the house, okay? But you got to have forgiveness. You got to have forgiveness because if you don't forgive that son for what they did, and I told you, I have stories after stories after stories. This one young man was on uh, crack cocaine real, 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 real bad. And uh, his mother, for whatever reason, left him in the house and they went on vacation. And when they came back from vacation... Oh, I'm talking today. Lord, open up our ears to hear this in the spirit. Your heart got to be open for what I'm teaching today. You got to be able to, because I can even feel the wrestling right now that the devil don't want you to have forgiveness. He don't want you to forget what was done to you. But you got to have it because not just for you, but for that person that needs to be restored. For that person that needs to be restored. But back to the story. They left the house um, to this son. And when they came back... Uh, he had sold everything in the house. I want to take my time. I want you to hear the weight of this. They went on vacation. And when they came back, he had sold everything in the house. And when I say everything, it, look, it looked like they had moved. Furniture, TVs, clothes, her diamond rings, the watches, everything. And as they opened up the door, turned the key and opened up the door... He's sitting in the middle of the floor, face full of tears, crying, saying, Mama, I'm sorry. Now, this is powerful, okay, because we can talk about a lot of things. We can, we, we can be mad and we can say, he didn't sold all my stuff. I work hard for this stuff. I labor for this stuff. And we can deal with the idea that my stuff is gone. How can I get this back? Okay, we can deal with it from the angle. Sure, he's crying. Everybody cry after all the stuff is gone. And we can look at it from that angle and say, well, you know what? You got the nerve to cry. Why didn't you cry before you sold all the stuff? We can deal with it from that angle. We can deal with it from the angle that you should never be able to be loud in my house again. And we should write him off and be done with him. We can deal with it from that angle. But let's, 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 as we're talking about all the angles, what about the angle that he has a purpose? Before he was in his mother's womb, he was chosen. Can we deal with his purpose? And could this be an opportunity to wake him up? Could this be the moment in which he needs to know the love of God and forgiveness? Could this be the place of redemption for him? And, and, and I'm telling you, not to just look at the last thing I talk about, but all of these things run through our mind. But at the bottom line, he needs forgiveness. He may need counseling. We may have to uh, cut him off for a while. We may have to make sure he gets in the right place. But one thing we cannot delay, we cannot delay that we need forgiveness, that he needs forgiveness. Now, if the mother and father was not able to forgive him, we know he had a drug problem. 
We can deal with that. We can deal with the anger. Why would you leave your keys to a son that you know is on crack? Was you irresponsible? We can deal with all the angles, but one of the things we must we must conclude is that he needs forgiveness. Not only does he need forgiveness, but this is challenging to the heart of the one that has to forgive. Because it's easy for us to stand on the outside and say, forgive your son. Well, you you still got your TVs in your house. He didn't sell all of your stuff. Your wedding rings are not gone. This is real. So we have to deal with all the pains, all the voices. But in order for him to be restored, let's say there's a calling on his life. Let's say that he has destiny on his life. Let's say that there are souls that are tied to this individual. If we don't forgive him and we don't participate in this uh, restoration, then where is our heart? How can we say that we cannot forgive a person at this level? But we love to read about Apostle Paul. And we love to read Romans and Corinthians and Ephesians and Galatians and Hebrews and Colossians. Well, the same person that you're reading about faith and salvation and justification is the same man that had people killed. He's the same man that gave a consent to stone Stephen, who was full of the Holy Ghost. And this soul character said, stone him. Stone him, but you 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 forgave Apostle Paul, the same person that writes Genesis, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It's about a name, about a man by the name of Moses. But the same man killed the Hebrew, but you forgave him. David, a, a man after God's own heart, had sex with another man's wife, and her name was Bathsheba. And then he had his had her husband killed, and then he married his sin. But we forgave him. In order to really have the ministry of faith and love, you must be able to be able to spend time with God and, and, and be able to exercise forgiveness. Now, I talked about David. I talked about Moses. I talked about uh, people in the Bible. Let's talk about you. How many people have hurt you, robbed you, stole from you? How many people have you robbed, stole Lie, come on, you did some things bad, you've broken some women's heart, you've broken some men's heart, you wanted God to forgive you, how many times you told God no, how can we not forgive when we ask God to forgive us on a daily basis, what is a greater offense to, uh, to offend God or to offend man, so we must have this, and many times in my life, that God was challenging me to forgive people. Why? Because just as much as you are needed in the kingdom, Robert Jenkins, Robert James Duvall Jenkins, so is this person. Good to see you, Willie Harmon. And you got to forgive that person. And you got to forgive mama for what mama did. And you got to forgive daddy for what daddy did. And you got to forgive your brother. And you got to forgive your ex-wife. And you got to forgive your husband. Because without forgiveness, the ministry of faith and love can not be applied. Ooh, even Jesus on the cross, nails in his hands, thorns on his head, pierced in the side, say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This ministry, there, there's some people who want to come back to the fold. They want to tell you that they're sorry. They want to make it right. They want to get it together, but they're afraid if they tell you all the truth, will you forgive them? Some people have a hard time forgiving themselves. So reconciliation, and I'm praying for you right now. If you did some things to your mother, to your father, to your sister, to your brother, you did some things to your husband, you did some things to your wife, you know what you did. I'm praying that you say, Lord, I want to be restored. I want to be reconciled. I want to be reconciled. Don't get so egotistical for the people that you hurt and you know you hurt them and you know you was bitter. That's why you hurt them. You may have been depressed. You may have been under attack. I don't know what it is, but you got to be able to say, I want to make amends. Don't let your ego stop you from being, uh, stop you from having forgiveness. Sometimes we're too arrogant to forgive. That's the problem. You think you're too big to admit your mistake. You have become self-righteous. You've become arrogant as if you can't say where you were wrong, but you want everybody else to admit where they were wrong. 
Oh, this is powerful. And a lot of times it hinders great friendship. It hinders the ministry of faith and love. Because how can you exercise faith and love when you have not forgiven? You have not forgiven. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me show you something. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. And let's start with verse 9. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 9, watch this. Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, I release right now the spirit of forgiveness. That someone is on this page and they have hurt somebody. The Lord, you teach them how to reconcile. How to say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Forgive me. I want forgiveness. I want back in the fold. I know I'm, I'm, part, I'm supposed to be a part of the family. But I, I did some things wrong, Mom. I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to be part, part of the family, but I did some things wrong, son. See, we got to do this. Watch this. I feel the spirit moving. And this is a good time in your repentance and in your confession that you begin to, begin to make it right. And, 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 and guess what? And God wants you to rededicate your life back to God. You've been carrying this guilt and this shame. You've been going the other way. If you see them on Facebook, you won't come on. You see them uh, somewhere in the mall, you go the other way because you feel bad, but you know it's supposed to be. You won't make the phone call. You won't call them, but forgiveness has to take place in order for this ministry to be effective. Why? Because we need you, my brother. We need you, my sister. We need you back in the game. We need what God has told you. We need what you have experienced. We need your wisdom and your all. Mama needs you. Daddy needs you. Your daughter needs you. Your son needs you. This is important for reconciliation. This is the ministry that God gives everybody. Everybody want to be apostles and prophets and men. But the first ministry that God gives us all is the ministry of reconciliation. To be reconciled back with God. And some of you got to forgive. But some of you have to forgive God. You got a grudge against God. You can't let God go. You holding God in a box because you will not forgive God because something happened to your son. And you can't believe God let something happen to your mother. And I'm telling you right now, I, Lord, I thank you for this spirit moving. You've been bitter towards God and you've taken out on everybody else. But you're really angry with God. You're really angry with God. For why did this happen? And why did you let this happen? And why did you stop this? And if you're such a caring God, why didn't you allow these things to come across my path? Okay? Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this matter, therefore pray ye. He says pray. He's teaching what is called uh, uh, um, the Lord's Prayer. And it's really the disciples' prayer. And he says, our Father which art in heaven. Now listen to it. Hallowed be thy name. Okay? Hallow, our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness is in the Lord's prayer. To me, it's one of the most powerful things in the text. If we understood really what's in his disciples' prayer, we understand how powerful. So you can't say, I'm a Christian. You can't say, I got a calling on my life. You can't say, I'm a personal prophet, but I'm not going to forgive. I get unforgiveness because forgiveness is a part of your relationship with God. When you pray this prayer, forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who debt, trespass against us. Those who have did us an injustice. Daddy, I forgive you. And sometimes, I feel the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you have to get somebody to stand in proxy. You have to get somebody to stand in proxy. Sometimes we need to have these kind of service, a real altar call at our church and say, I need you to stand as my father. My father is dead. My father is out of town. And I need to be able to say to you what I need to say to him so I can move on with my life. Be surprised at the people who are not able to move on because there's people who offended you and they're dead and gone and you cannot let them go. But you need to have somebody stand in proxy. You need to say to them, I forgive you for not being the father I wanted you to be. I forgive you for abandoning mama and the three girls. I forgive you for it. I forgive you for it. I forgive you for not every time you said you was going to be there, you wasn't there. I forgive you for it. 
You may, may have to have some privacy with some people are standing in proxy. It is you and that person. And you may have to talk to the rapist or talk to the person that molested you because you'll be bound. You'll be bound. And there's some things you will never embrace. There's some things that you'll never let touch you. You may be saying, I'm done with marriage. I'm done with church. I'm done with this because you can't forgive the pastor who was not for you. See, so you have to have this forgiveness and you have to speak to that person until you see a breakthrough in your spirit, until t tears come down your eyes and say, I release it because I know that God has a calling for me, but I'm carrying too much weight of what I experienced. Was I hurt? Yes. Do I ignore my emotions? No. Was it real? Sure it was, but I have greater destiny. I can't be stuck where I harden my heart. Today, harden not your heart. Wherever you harden your heart at, you are still stuck in that day. Today, harden not your heart. So if you harden your heart, you are still in that day. Who has hurt you? Who has offended you? Who has violated you that you have never moved on in that area because you can't forgive? But we pray this prayer. Forgive us of our debts. I did some things wrong to people. As many as people who say I've been a blessing to them, I ain't always did it right. I've hurt a lot of people in my journey. I'm going to talk about that. Some things were deliberate. Some things was not immature. Being young, being misled, having my own issues. But this is real. But I got to say, Lord, forgive me. And I got to ask that person, forgive me. Okay. Forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And most people stop there. But you'll see right after the disciples' prayer, when it says, you know, in, in, you know for, for thine is the power of the kingdom, the power of the glory forever. Amen. Look at the next verse. And if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It seemed like the prayer was over, but he went right back to something that was in the prayer. In the middle of the prayer, he talks about forgiveness, but when the prayer is over, he goes back. Out of all the points that he could have reiterated about, all the points that he could have revisited, why did he revisit forgiveness? Why did he revisit forgiveness? Somebody said, what if they have, what if you have forgiven the person, but they still do the things to hurt you? Okay, thank you for that, Patricia. This is real. When people do things that hurt you and you've forgiven them, you're on the right path. Now God is going to give you a revelation of why they keep hurting you. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Most of us are ego and are, and are yeah, and, and be very arrogant that we don't want to know the revelation of why they're hurting you. But we have to understand that I am in your life for a reason. And if you keep hurting me, I need to see why you are hurting me. I need to know the revelation. There's something. Why are you picking on me? Why am I the object of, of, of your offense or the object of your uh, uh, anger or bitterness? And the more you get a revelation, you'll be able to help that person in that situation. This is what it's all about. This is what I'm saying. There are many times that God has trusted you with trouble. He trusted you with the person that's bitter. He trusted you with the brother who's always jealous. He trusted you with the sister who's always angry. He trusted you with the cousin or the employee. And your revelation of why they do what they do. This is the reason why we turn the other cheek. We don't turn the other cheek because we weak. We turn the other cheek because God gives us a revelation of what is controlling your hand. He gives us a revelation. And if you keep doing me wrong, I'm going to see the death. Devil. It ain't about you. The devil wants me not to love you. The devil wants me not to be with you. The devil wants me not to make a covenant. And I got to see that this is not you. There's a, that somebody pulling the strings. And you got to warn this. Who wants to have the revelation behind the enemy? 
But this is why the Bible says, love, love your enemies and bless them that despitefully use you. Why? Because when you, when you sow love, you're going to reap it. If you keep doing me wrong and I keep doing you right, one day you're going to have to do me right. Why? Because doing me right is what I sown, so I got to reap it one day. Ooh. Gotta get the revelation. This is what God taught me. The revelation. So this is, let me tell you something. An enemy is only a friend who's been wounded. An enemy, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. An enemy is only a friend who's been wounded. Hurt people hurt people. Sometimes people don't know how to do anything else but that. They are in captivity to pain. They're in captivity to what shaped them. Shaped them. They've been shaped. They so bitter and the devil hoping that you leave them, you forsake them, you write them off, you're done with them, but he don't want you to see him that's using this person. But when you say, okay, I'm forgiving you, oh, you're still doing some things, you're still saying some things, let me see why God trusted me with this kind of trouble. Whoa. <laughs> and that's, that was a great question. I love I love questions. Woo! Okay? So I hope that answers your question. Get the revelation from your suffering. Don't never go to hell and not come out with keys. There's a reason why you are, you are put in the dilemma you are put in. There's a reason why you are being offended the way you're being offended. And the devil hoping. A lot of times you'll meet somebody and they don't even like you and don't know you. They hoping that you don't see the devil behind them. The devil says, as long as I get you to see it from a carnal perspective, then you'll never see the divine revelation. Do you know most of the people that you need is the very people the devil hoping you don't like? Do you know most of the time the very people that's been designed to help you, they have your medicine in their mouth is the person that the devil hoping they say something that make you don't want to hear them anymore? Oh, you got to be very careful on who you write off because it could be your help because we can't discern it from offense. Because we, we offend it easy. Or we say, I'm forgiving them, but I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to be a fool. Well, loving people, love suffers all things that look like a fool. Love hope of all things that look like a fool. Love bear all things that look like a fool. You're not a fool. You got the wisdom, the how to set people free who don't know how to love you yet. Oh my God, okay? So forgiveness is a powerful thing. Okay, let's turn to uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. You've got to have forgiveness to have the ministry of faith and love. You will never, you will never, you will never be able to love somebody without the faith. You have to hear what God says. Never be moved by what you see. Listen. I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> yes, you're right, Tasha. It's tight, but it's right. Because most of the time, see, in our flesh, we don't want to be bothered with nobody who get on our nerves. We don't want to be bothered with nobody who uh, who we say, you know, uh, going to play me for a fool. I ain't going to be nobody's dummy. You got to realize the assignment that you own. You got to realize the assignment that you own. If you can't, listen, Moses, Moses, Moses messed up and didn't see the promised land. Because he couldn't deal with the emotions of the people. And he let the emotions of the people take him out of character. God told Moses, <coughs> the, the people of the children of Israel begin, <coughs> they begin to complain about they had bitter waters and they have this and they have that and they have this. So God told Moses, go get Aaron, go to the mountaintop and, 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 and say this to the people. Well, Moses get upset. So he comes down and called the people stiff neck. And the Bible says, God tells, and you know, because <clears throat> really God was saying, tell them I'm going to bring water out of a rock. I'm, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. I'm faithful to my word. Even when people are complaining, God remains faithful. 
The real reason why I stick with God and I'm going to always be with God. And I'm saying this now, once you hear what I'm saying. The reason why is because I can never, regardless of what I've ever done in my life, I can never get God to change his mind about me. That was the number, that's one of the greatest revelations that I've ever had in my life. That I don't care what I did, God still was with me. I still could feel his love. <clears throat> and I didn't understand it. But God says, I already saw. I saw something. I put something in you. And I'm not going to change my mind. Okay? Very, very key. But, so I hope you got that. But what I was going to say, one of the revelations that God showed me is that when, when God shows me something about somebody, I don't let nothing that they do change what God said. If God tells me that Lady Lisa Williams is a woman of God, my spirit agrees with her. I don't care what she does. I don't care what the news say. I don't care what no one say. I'm sticking to what God told me about her. I don't even care what she say. And she can do some things that can be out of line with God. But I'm going to hold on to what God say. That's the key. That's the ministry of faith and love. You got to suffer all things and do all things. Because the truth, of the truth of the matter is this. That many of us in our journey drop the ball. Many of us on the way there mess up. Many of us on the way there get it wrong. We, we, sometimes we, it's not loving as we should be. Sometimes we still got some selfishness in us. Sometimes we still stubborn. Sometimes we still carnal. And I can't give up on what God said because you're going through transition. You're going through a journey. No one has it all yet. And if you have anybody in your life that you think qualifies to be your friend or to be in covenant, it's only because you don't know enough with them. But if you would go home and spend time with them, there'll be something about them you don't like. I don't care how much you love your bishop or your apostle or me or anybody else. You don't live with me. You hear me uh, five days out of a week from 5.30 to 6.30 at the most seven. But my wife lives with me. I'm talking to you now. And so we have to have forgiveness. And you have to, have to hold on to what God has said. Because if you walk with anybody enough, you're going to see some flesh stick his head up. But that don't mean that God's not called them or used them. And that don't mean that they can justify their sin. That means that you have to pray for me and intercede for me. And you may have to rebuke me, but you cannot leave what God showed you about me. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So I don't let nobody change my mind about what God said. Not what I said, but what God said. Okay, Romans chapter 10. Uh, this is one of my favorite Bible stories, uh, but let me, matter of fact, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, let's go there, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, are you with me? Verse 17. If you're just coming on, hit that share button. If you had not hit that share button, please do that. We are in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He's a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. The first part of this says all things are passed away. That's spiritual. You have a new nature. You have a new nature, okay? But then it says all things become. All things become new. So the old things are passed away instantly. The new things are on a progressional timeline. The old things are washed away. I am a whole new creation. Old things are passed away. They're done. But the new things, behold, stare, glass, pause. All things become, become journey. We got to know how to stick with people while their new things are becoming, while the new mind is becoming, while the new attitude is becoming, while the new lifestyle is becoming. So even though they are a new creature, the mindset has a journey and it must become. But don't leave too fast. Don't give up on them. Behold, stare, glance, pause, watch the new things become new. All things. Woo! Become.
become new. And all things are of God. Who has did what? Reconcile us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us, what did he give us? The ministry of reconciliation. I know we want to be saved and then be a prophet. We want to be saved and then we apostles. We want to be saved and then be evangelists. But the minute you get saved, your first ministry is reconciliation to God. And then give us the ministry, which means to serve reconciliation. Woo! To wit that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. He put the word in us. You want you say, I got a word from the Lord, I'm going to get a car. I got a word from the Lord, I'm going to get a house. No, the words you got from the Lord, from the Lord is the word of reconciliation. This is how the ministry of faith and love is being able to be exercised. Oh, are you with me? So forgiveness. Now, do, not only do I must forgive those who have hurt me, I must forgive myself. I, I know what it is to be hurt by people. I know what it is to hurt people. I know what it is to forgive people. And I also know what it is to mess up so bad and hoping with all the hope that you have that somebody can forgive you. You may not understand the importance of forgiveness until you are the one that did the crime. You may not know the power of forgiveness until you are the one that did the destruction. Until you are the one that caused the problem. Until you are the one that tore up the ministry. Until you are the one that caused the problem in the marriage. You may not know this until you need somebody to look past your faults and see your needs. Oh, you got to do this because I know what it is to hoping that they let me preach again, hoping that they trust me again, hoping that, I, that they'll believe that I, I won't do that. I had a friend that used to steal all the time and he said, I'm saved now, but 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 because I've I've robbed so many people, nobody trusts me with their kids. Nobody trusts me in their house. Uh, I've been saved ten years, and they still see me. I know what it is to have that. I had a friend that was on crack, and every time he would leave home, he would be gone two or three days on crack, and then he got saved, and God saved him. But his problem was that any time he would leave the house, his wife was nervous that maybe he'll relapse and go back and he won't come home again. Maybe if he get paid on a Friday and he get off at 3 o'clock, if he went home by 3.20, she was nervous about the money. Because she, in her mind, she couldn't let it go. And so, and a lot of times he would come home 20 minutes late or 30 minutes late and his wife is upset. She's sitting on the porch. She can't wait for him to get out the car. And he said, baby, I just stopped and got some ice cream. When you going to see me as new? When you going to let all things become new? I understand that I the one built this in you. I the one that built the mistrust. But if you let me build the wall that made you not trust me, would you let my life tear the wall down as well? We got to let people that build the wall in our life, that did things to us that we don't want to be with them. We have to let when God change them, forgive them, and let them take the wall down brick by brick. Every time they do something right, we should celebrate one of the bricks have come down, another brick has come down, and we should be happy. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes because of what was done to us, we will keep that wall up, and you're going to live right on the other side of the wall, but I'm never going to ever let the wall not come between us. So we're back in bed again. We, we're still in the marriage. We're still at the church. We're still at the job. But there's a wall between us that forgiveness could tear down, but we don't want to forgive. What happens to the person that was on crack, but have a calling? The homosexual that has a calling. The lesbian that has a calling. The guy who did 15 years in, in prison, he has a calling. Is it done? Is there a separate church for the wounded? 
that has been, has been recovered but have not been restored, have been fixed but have not been put back in the game. Is, is there a place for the people who have, who, who have, have wounds, but the wounds have been healed, but they've never been allowed back in the same position in your mind? In the ministry of faith and love, it's about forgiveness to the other person, okay? All right. Uh, let's go to, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I want you to begin to pray. If I said something in this hour, that touched you, that you were there on either side, I want you to begin to repent. I want you to begin to confess. I want you to begin to say, Lord, restore me back. Lord, give me the bonus encouragement. Lord, if this is timing for reconciliation, if it's time to reunite with some people, if it's time to fix some things, Lord, give me what I need. I'm open up to the Holy Spirit. The Holy, the Holy Spirit may be leading you and you're afraid to make that phone call but I'm telling you, if this is touching your spirit right now and you know you're supposed to do this, when you make that phone call it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. See, sometimes you you holding your own self in captive because they have forgiven you and let you go and they'll be glad to see you but you don't believe they'll ever see you that way again. It's not their eyes, it's your eyes. You, you see yourself like the children of Israel. You believe in your own eyes that they see you as grasshoppers. You you believe in your own eyes that they see you as a criminal. They have let go. God, there's some people that God was working on them while he was working on you. And when y'all come back together again, you will have a change of heart about them. But they also will have a change of heart about you. Because God wasn't just working on you. He working on them as well. Give God a chance to show you how this ministry works. Give God a chance to show you how love works. Give God a chance to show you how hope works. Because faith, hope works by love. By love. Oh my God. This is so good. Watch this. Oh. Watch this. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Are you there? God bless you. We thank Lord, we thank you for the spirit of reconciliation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of rededication. Luke chapter 15. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. The publicans gathered and the sinners gathered to hear Jesus pre preach or teach. And the Pharisees and the scribes mumbled under their breath, they mummering, saying, This man receives sinners and eat with them. Now the publicans were there and the sinners was there. But the Pharisees, religious people, Sadducees, religious people, you have four sets of people here. You have the publicans, you have the sinners, then you have the Pharisees, and you have the Sadducees. The, fa the Pharisees and Sadducees were mummering. The publicans and the sinners came to hear a word. The, the religious people, the church people, and most of the time, it's church people who have a problem with reconciliation. Most time, it's church people who have a problem with forgiving your brother. It's the church people who have a problem with letting people in that messed up, that needs God's mercy, needs God's grace, needs God's faith, needs God's love. Most time, it's the church people who have a problem with this, just like in the text. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they murmur, saying, this man receives sinners, and he eat with them. He spent time with them. He dies with them. Watch this. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, what man of you, he's speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, y'all got a problem with me eating with the sinners? You got a problem with me preaching to the sinners, receiving the sinners in, loving the sinners? 
He said, what man of you have a hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, does he not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until, until, until? Do we not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Leave the church until he find it? Leave his gift until he find it? He leaves his obligation. He puts it in the hands of somebody else until he finds it. Not just one Sunday. He don't just call you every now and then. Ooh, but he leaves the 99. And the 99 and the shepherds that were left to take care of the 99, they know that we will not see this shepherd until he finds the sheep that is lost. Woo! Until he finds it. He says, and when he has found it, now Jesus is speaking with the hope that the hope of the shepherd is that I will find it. I'm going to find it. We got to have people that say, I know I'm going to find you. If you're lost in a crack house, I'm coming to get you. You're lost in bitterness, I'm coming to get you. And you're lost in lust, I'm coming to get you. And I'm not going to return until I find you. Not just not return whole, but in my mind, I pray for you all the time. In my mind, I'm calling you. I'm calling you. I'm asking people about you. Have you seen Brother John? Have you seen Sister Gloria? Have you seen Sister Doris? Why? Because it's important to me that you be in the place God called you to be. Ooh. He says, and when he had found it, he lays it on his shoulders. Rejoicing. Lays it on his shoulder. If you study the history, they literally break one of the legs of the sheep so the sheep cannot run away anymore. And they throw the shoulder on the on, on the sheep on their shoulder. You gotta have people to not only look for you, not only that is willing to leave their own comfort situation. They they sacrifice what they're doing because you mean a lot to them. Oh, come on. We love to brag about we got 5,000 members and 3,000 members. Well, would you leave them all for one? Would you leave 5,000 members for one? Would you leave 3,000 for one? I didn't say leave them unattended to, but make sure that there are other shepherds in the house, other teachers in the house, five folders in the house because you're concerned about that one. Well, let me tell you something. You can't keep track with 5,000. So first of all, you should have all type of shepherds and all types of people in place so we'll know when one is missing. We can't go after the one because we don't even know when they're missing. And I'm not talking about just not being in the building. People can still be coming to church and be missing. They ain't missed a Sunday in three years, but they ain't been there in five. Oh, because they're missing. Their faith is missing. Their joy is missing. Their passion is missing. But he goes after it. Not only does he leave and, go, and goes after it and he searched for it, but he also is willing to carry it, to carry it back. If I'm going to break you so that I can help you, I'm going to carry you while you're broken. If I have to give you a word of rebuke, I'm going to carry you while you handle that rebuke. If I have to correct you, I'm going to carry you because I'm the one that correct you. I know it hurt it when I broke your leg. I know it hurt it. I know you can't do what you normally would do because you've been touched by something. But I will carry you back. He puts it on his shoulders. He puts it in the place of the government, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. He puts it back in a place of order. Government brings order. Where, where there is no government, there is no order. And where there is no order, there is no flow. Because every flow needs a form. Every flow needs a form. Woo! God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So he puts it on his shoulders. Watch this. He says... Until he finds it. And when he finds it, he lays it on his shoulders. Rejoicing. Rejoicing. We need people that's glad you're back. Glad you're back smiling. Glad you're back in the ministry. Glad you're back with your husband, with your wife. Glad that you're back with your children. Glad that you're back working. They're glad. They're rejoicing of your return. He says, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends. 
because everybody ain't glad. You about to get the right people that's going to rejoice with you. Why in this text, in both times with the sheep and the coin, it says his friends? Why? Because everybody's not glad. Everybody don't even like this kind of message. Everybody don't want you to reconcile with somebody who hurts you. They'll say, is you a fool? That's crazy. Don't be no dummy. Ministry looks foolish to those who don't have a revelation of the suffering. The suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Jesus was accused and did no wrong. And the Bible said he didn't say not a mumbling word. The Bible says, vengeance of mine, said the Lord. I will fight your battle. We so quick to fight, God can't even fight our battles. Because when he look up, we didn't already fight. Because his friends and neighbors says to them, rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep, which was lost. It's the same thing with the coin. So, Father, I thank you for the spirit of reconciliation. I thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Father, thank you for clarity. Thank you for healing our heart. Not only do you forgive us, but you healed us. Lord, I ask you right now to release the Holy Ghost in their lives. The awareness of the Holy Ghost out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water and heal them from the offense. Heal them from the wounds of their past. Heal them from the wounds of their, of their offenders, God. Heal them from that, God. Give us the spirit of reconciliation. Give us the ministry of forgiveness. We want to walk in the ministry of faith and love. But Lord, help us to forgive. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. In Matthew chapter 6, it says something that I want to teach for one minute, and then we, uh, I hope you come back tomorrow and do part 3. In chapter 6 of Matthew, it talks about, and, and let me turn there again. I want, I want to read something to you. Because I want you to have the right attitude and forgiveness, okay? It says, Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now watch this. Forgive our debts as, you want to pray? Okay. As we forgive our debtors. This is the attitude. You asking God, forgive me in the same manner that I forgive others. Now watch this. If you say, I forgive, but I'll never forget, then you're asking God, forgive me, but don't forget. Why? Because it's the word A-S. Forgive our debt to us as we, in the same manner, under the same attitude. So if you have an attitude of forgiveness, but not forgetting, you're asking God to do to you like you're doing to them. So be very careful. I forgive them, but I ain't going to forget. I don't believe, but the Bible says love does not take record of any harm, which means if anybody ever did any harm to you, love don't keep record. So who's keeping record? You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said. Then that's not love because love keeps no record of any offense. It, love says I don't remember. Love says, I didn't record that. I didn't write that down in my mind. We are writing things down in our mind that says, I forgive you. No, that's improper because love keeps no record. Okay. Watch this. 2 Corinthians, well, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Ooh. Watch this. Let me pull it up. All right, watch this. Let me see where it is. All right, come on, come on. First Corinthians 13, verse 5. It's talking about love. Verse 4. Charity suffers long. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The, he uses the word charity because love is something that love should be a verb. Don't make love a noun. 
Love is a verb. So charity is something that we give. Charity. When you do charity, it's a service that you give. So it says, because you can have love for me and never get love to me. The Bible says have love one to another. I can have a gift for you and you never got it. I say, I got the gift right here at the house. But you had it for me, but you never had it to me. The ministry of faith and love is a ministry of action. It's a verb. The faith and love is a verb. Love to me. So charity suffers long. Not love this for, but love this to. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envy is not. Charity bottom not itself. It's not puffed up. Watch this. Does not behave itself unseemly. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Even when it's attacked. Even when it's jumped on. Even when it's lied on. Love remains love. Seeketh not her own. Is not evenly, easily provoked. Think of no evil. <laughs> Don't keep no record. Watch this. Are you there? It keeps no account. Father, we bless you for this ministry. Forgive me, Lord, if I was forgiving somebody, but not in the right attitude. I didn't let love do what you wanted love to do through me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Good to see you, Brother Lee. I'm going to call you, man. I got so many videos to show you. God bless you. Please meet us tomorrow on part three. Please meet us tomorrow on part three. Okay? Please meet us tomorrow. Part three of the ministry of faith and love. God bless you. We love you. We thank you. Begin to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. There's people that God wants to connect, reconnect. But without forgiveness, without the ministry of reconciliation, we delay what God wants to happen. Don't be, don't be the roadblock. And let me say this. To women who's been hurt, to men that's been hurt in relationships, you have to give people, you have to give the Holy Spirit a chance to change people. Because the wall that you may have up from your last relationship because of betrayal, you may get married to the new person or the right person. And because of the wall that was up in your life, they have to marry you with a wall. Sometimes you have walls up in your new marriage, in your new ministry, in your new life from the old marriage, but you never took the wall down. The husband didn't build that wall. The wife didn't build that wall. You making them subject to a wall they didn't build. Forgiveness allows you to have new covenant relationships without the old walls. Okay, come on, baby. Sandy, come on. My wife is going to pray. She's feel led to pray. She's going to pray. And we're just going to follow whatever God does with her. And then we'll go on. Bless the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray. Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving, and Lord, we come before your courts with praise. And Lord, we intend through the blood of Jesus on today, God. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your word on today, God. We thank you, God, Lord, for moving everything, Lord God, out of our spirits that shouldn't be, God. Father, we come against every spirit, Lord God, that wants to, Lord, kick against your word, God. Every spirit, God, that has us bound in the spirit of our minds on today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you on today, God, for your word that came forth on today with clarity, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, bless for the you. revelation of your word on today, God. In the name of Jesus, bless Father, you. we bless you, Lord, for loving on us today, God. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for, Lord, just shielding us from the enemy on today, God. In the name of Jesus, 
And Lord, we thank you right now, God. We thank you, Lord, for moving, Lord, every hurt on today, God. Every pain on today, God. Every spirit of unforgiveness on today, God. Yes, Lord. In yes, the Lord. name of yes, Jesus, Lord. Lord. Father, we bless you right now, yes, God, Lord. because, Lord, you are worthy to be praised on today, God. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for going before us on today, God. Lord, we even thank you, Lord, for our, our spirits on today, God. We thank you, Lord, for receiving the word on today, God. Oh. In the name of Jesus, God. Father, I bless you that this word has not fallen on stony ground on today, God. But, God, for the for the hearts of the people being fertile on today, God, yes. to receive your yes, word Lord. with gladness on Lord today, God. Name. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And, Father, we thank you right now, God, for unrooting, oh, God, for mm. plugging up on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now, God, for changing yes. our mindsets yes. on today, God, for changing our hearts on today, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you right now for doing it, God. We love on you today, Lord, God. Yes. For we are nothing without you on today, Lord. And we bless you on today, God. Yes. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for binding every family together in love on today, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Father, we call oneness to order on today, God. We call unity of spirits on today, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, allow our love to be in alignment with your word on today, God. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus, Father. Every hidden agenda, God, we ask you to expose it, oh God. Lord, reveal us to ourselves on today, God. Lord, let our love be perfected one to another, oh God. Lord, let our hearts begin to run, Lord, heart to heart and breast to breast on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, and God, we bless you for it, Lord. We thank you right now, God. We thank you for revealing, Lord God, all the hidden things on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, teach us, Lord God, to be good stewards of our love, oh God. Lord, let us begin to, Lord, let our love shine, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, for, thus, for those of us, Lord God, that does not have the true understanding, God, begin to reveal it unto us, Lord God. Teach us how to love with the agape on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we bless you, God. And we thank you on today, Lord. Father, we receive it by faith on today, God. We thank you for having your way on today, God. We thank you, Lord, for the infilling of the Holy Ghost on today, God. Lord, begin to fill your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And let us receive it by faith on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we lift up the man of God on today, God. Father, we ask you to pour back all that he has poured out on today, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for our special heads on today, God. We thank you, Lord, for using him, Lord God, in this season. And God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, Lord, as we all begin to cover him, Lord God. We thank you for him on today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we bless you, God. Lord, I ask you that every home, Lord God, let love abide, Lord. Let the children begin to bind together, Lord. Lord, call the families back to unity on today, God. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, we receive it by faith on today, Lord. We bless you and we thank you on today, God. In the name of Jesus, and we glorify you for doing it, God. In Jesus' name, bless your name and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Be stripping in the Lord, and we'll see you tomorrow, same place, same time. God bless you.